righty, good to see everybody here this evening. Just a little bit more on this for me, guys, all right? And uh, my voice isn't quite what it usually is, so get a little bit of help. Uh, let's turn over to number 231, follow on, down in the valley with my Savior I would go. 231, and once you have it, let's stand together to sing it, and Brother Bob will lead us tonight. Follow on. On that first together, down in the valley with my Savior I would go, where the flowers are blooming and the sweet waters flow. Everywhere he leads me I would follow, follow one, walking in his footsteps till the ground be won. Follow, I would follow Jesus anywhere, everywhere I would follow one. Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus. Everywhere he led me, I would follow on. Down in the valley with my Savior I would go, where the storms are sweeping and the dark waters flow. <laughs> Lead me, I will never, never fear. Danger cannot ride me if my Lord is near. Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus anywhere, everywhere, I would follow one. Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus everywhere he led me, I would follow on. Down in the valley or upon the mountain steep, close beside my Savior would my soul ever keep. He will lead me safely in the path that he has trod Up to where they gather on the hills of God Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus Anywhere, everywhere, I would follow one Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus Anywhere he leads me, I will follow good singing and uh, good to see everybody here tonight and uh, boy it's been uh, an exciting week already we'll share some more of that with you in just a little bit but uh, it's great and I, I told somebody tonight it was a nice spring we had there for a little bit uh, all of a sudden it's summer isn't it and um, but I think it's gonna take a little turn and I, I tell you what Saturday they're saying it's supposed to be like 87 and uh, be thankful it isn't this Saturday uh, that'd be a long time out on blacktop at 87 degrees, but uh, I think it's going to cool off next week and get a little more like springtime, and uh, it's going to be perfect for the fair day, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, good things happening, and uh, we'll share those with you in just a little bit, um, but hey, Zach Anderson is a licensed driver. How about that? And uh, congratulations, Zach. Good job. And uh, he's now, did he drive everybody to church tonight? No, no, okay, all right, not yet, all right, and uh, did you, what'd you, what did you take your test in? You didn't take that big van, did you? I was going to say, that'd be rough. You took the smallest car you could find, yeah, yeah, smart man, all right, very good, that's great, congratulations, man, that's good. All right, let's open with a word of prayer, shall we? Father, we thank you for this evening, thank you for the midweek service, and we're grateful for another opportunity to gather together with the people of God, thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us. Lord, you're so, you do so far and above what we could ever ask or think. God, thank you for your goodness to us, and Lord, far above what any of us would deserve. And we ask you to meet with us now this evening. Give us what is needed during this midweek service. Uh, may you be pleased. May you be glorified as we gather together here this evening. It's in Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. 463 in your hymnal, 463, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound in time, shall be no more, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Let's sing that first all together. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound in time, shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, when the saved of us shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called 
missionary message is from Ken Felder, Worldview Ministries. The worship of God, the eternal plan of God, is to receive glory from every kindred, tribe, tongue, and nation. Our purpose in life is to participate in his plan. Before we can understand clearly the mission of the church, we must understand the motive of the church. Almost every church member, even those who never attempt to do so, would say that the church should be reaching lost people. But many cannot give the correct reason as to why. The correct motive is the glory of God. The church exists for the glory of God. This is the reason and it must become our reason for all we do. The tragedy of the unreached world is not that they are lost and going to hell, but the tragedy is that God, who alone is worthy of worship, is not being worshiped by them. If half the world is still unreached after 2,000 years of the modern, modern missionary era, would you agree that the church is failing, that it is weak, that it has lost its focus? What is the problem? What is the source? One could make the clear case that the church in general operates without the power of God upon its work. In most places, we're content to conduct our programs, whether or not the power of the Spirit is evident. Last Sunday, thousands of churches carried out their normal schedule, and no one noticed the Spirit of God was not there. Some operate like this for years, without anyone ever having a broken heart over the absence of the true work of the Spirit, and without ever being grieved that over 66,000 people will die today who will never hear His name. The church of today needs a revival of the Holy Ghost power. Behind the absence of power lies the absence of prayer. Most prayer meetings are prayer moments where we take a list of the problems and needs of our people to God in a consolatory act that helps us feel like we are bearing one another's burdens. It is certainly right to pray for one another, but what about prayer for the world? When is the last time someone raised a hand in your prayer meeting and requested prayer for the Lasari Takje, people with a population of 43,000 43, who are 100% Muslim and not one Christian among them? Have you ever heard a prayer request for the Pambong of Sungara with over half a million unreached people? What about the more than 2,200 unreached people groups of India? some of which number in the multi-millions. Do we regularly obey the command to pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers into his harvest? The world is not being reached because we are not asking for it. Psalm 2.8 says, Ask of me, I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thine possession. 
But the problem goes deeper. Behind the absence of presence of the spirit of the absence of prayer lies a bigger issue. The source of it all is the absence of passion for the glory of God. Have we ever wept for the sake of his name? Have we ever felt what David felt when he went down to the valley to face Goliath because the name of the God was being defied? Where is the passion for his glory? From the beginning of Genesis to the end of Revelation, from the creation of the world to the consummation from the first invitation, Genesis 3, 8, and 9, to the last invitation, Revelation 22, 17, God has been on a single mission to, de to declare his glory and to draw all men to himself. God is passionate for a glory. Are we? Robert Spears said in 1990, if the church were here, she ought to be, before 20 years would pass, the story of the cross would be proclaimed in the ears of every living man. Another great person said, where passion for God is weak, missions will be absent. Please accept this loving challenge, get alone with God, and ask him to make you passionate about him. Not passionate about the work, or the ministry, or the church. Do not ask for a burden for lost souls. Ask for a passion for God. If he will grant this request, and he will grant it in earnest, to the earnest seeker, then what is God's heart will begin to become part of your heart. His priorities will become your priorities. His desires will replace your carnal fleshy ones. And if one praying this will inspire another, then another, then another perhaps we will have a revival of awareness of the need to reach the unreached world. Perhaps this awareness and this passion for God will cause us to place ourselves at his disposal and become part of the army of the soldiers that will bring his name to every kindred tribe and tongue and bring every creature to the throne of God in ultimate worship. Brother Fielder did about six articles, and that was one of the ones that he put out that I thought was very good, and I wanted everybody to hear that. And uh, that was challenging, to to say the least, on that. Appreciate his ministry there with Worldview Ministries. Um, all right, get your prayer guide out. You have that handy? And anybody need one? Put your hand up in the air. I shall get you one. Everybody covered? Very good. Good job. And uh, let's go to the coming events first, all right? And uh, the RU Inside tomorrow night down at the CRC. Continue to pray for that ministry, 6.30 to 8.30. Uh, tomorrow evening, our regular RU right here at the church on Friday night from 7 to 9. Uh, Saturday morning, Operation Saturation continues. And it, by the way, continue this week now, all right? Keep getting the flyers out. I think we're somewhere around 6,000 uh, that are out. And uh, we have to keep uh, the pace up here, all right? So uh, get some of you are going to reload tonight, I'm sure, from uh, Sunday. But continue to uh, get them out and invite folks to come and listen. Um, we, we'll meet Saturday morning at 10 a.m. and we'll go out. But, uh, you know, if you're available on Thursday night, Friday night, different times like that, and you can go to any park, anywhere there's ball fields, and there's groups of people there for ball games, just, just hand them out. It's a free community event, a free carnival I want to invite you to come. People take them. They're glad to have them. They can't believe that it's free. And uh, that's where the kids are, families with children, and that's where you want to focus. And, boy, I tell you what, you could get rid of several hundred flyers very quickly and uh, just invite folks to come. So if you can work uh, not only hard, you can work smart and uh, get to where you can get the most of them out and do the most good. And uh, that's a great, great thing. All right. Now, uh, Saturday morning at 10, I got a note to the teenagers. Uh, you come out Saturday and pass out the flyers and uh, there's going to be a lunch provided for you afterwards. And uh, so all the teens can be a part of that and uh, make sure you come out on Saturday morning. We do need help if anybody's willing to be a nursery worker on Saturday. Lindy usually does that, uh, McKeon, and she has a mother daughter function to go to on Saturday. And so uh, and obviously she needs to fulfill that obligation. And so if anybody wants to help and say, well, uh, I'll watch the kiddos so people can go out 
uh, that would be a great, great blessing, especially for the bus workers and uh, others I know. Uh, if you could help us out with that, please see me after the service, will you? Uh, that, would be a, that would be a big blessing on Saturday for nursery, all right? And um, then, of course, the Sunday with Mother's Day, and we have a, a wonderful CD that we're going to give to all the mothers that are present on Sunday, and you'll enjoy that. And, uh, of course, Operation Saturation will continue right on through next week. Now, we do need, I do have a list of uh, signs that we're going to need to have made. Some have just, uh, uh, are due to be upgraded. Others we don't have and uh, we need to make. So, now listen, it's, it's pretty simple. Some people can make signs and some people can't. All right? And uh, so if you're not a sign maker, if nobody can ever read your writing, then you, you wouldn't be one to volunteer to make signs. All right? But if you kind of like that kind of thing and you're pretty good at it, uh, you know, then uh, if you did you like to color as a kid, then you might be a candidate for being a sign maker. All right, but uh, we we need your help with that. We'll uh, we'll have all the material here, the markers and uh, the poster board and things like that that we need, and uh, we just need people who are willing to make some signs. Anybody a sign maker, and you think well, I'll be willing to help out and get some signs made? Anybody got one back here? going to be a lot of Lindy does it all by herself. Anybody else can help? It doesn't. I'm not telling you what day to come. Whenever you can come, we'll have the material ready for you to do it. You can do it. Jeannie can do it. Amanda can do it. Good. Lisa can do it. Good. All right. That helps. All right. So we'll, uh, we'll, get, the, we'll get the materials probably over there by Friday or so and uh, have everything ready for you. And then whenever you're able to come in, there'll be a list up and you can cross off once you make a sign and that way you'll know what's been done and what still needs to get done and uh, we can go from there. All right? Now, uh, on the inside, of course, we have the uh, praise reports, a good attendance on Sunday morning, 20 on that bus on Sunday. That was good. And uh, Heather, uh, Jeannie's sister, accepted Christ her Savior Sunday evening. And uh, that was a good thing. And uh, we're over 5,000. I think we're getting between five and 6,000 now as far as the flyers go. And uh, good things are happening. Uh, let's see. Dairy Queen, who had previously promised us 200 hot dogs, uh, called and asked if we would like to have the buns with those hot dogs, too. And so they're going to give us the 200 buns. And... Um, we got a $20 gift card from Culver's Ice Cream for to go for the drawing uh, that we'll have. If, if someone can go there. Uh, Andy went over to Tony's Coney's over on West Broad, and uh, they're going to give us 400 hot dogs for the big day. Isn't that good? And uh, Walgreens gave us 20 cases of water, uh, 480 bottled water, and uh, gave that to us. Um, Lindy got five free tire rotations and balancing from Discount Tire. And uh, that's the one in Canal Winchester, okay? So, um, and then I was, uh, we were at Toledo's, and uh, uh, Frankie down there at Toledo's uh, told him we're going to have a drawing, and we'd like to contribute something for that. And he goes, I'll be right back. And he brought me out a card that says you get a free dinner once a month for a year. So you, know, you come and you have a card that has all the months on it, and they just punch. You go in May, they'll punch May out, and you go in June, they'll punch June out, and you just goes all the way around till you get all 12 of them punched out. So you get 12 free dinners, and uh, that's pretty awesome. And uh, so good, good things happening, and uh, that's exciting to see. And uh, praise the Lord for that. All right, all right. Now we look at the uh, prayer requests. Uh, on our list and uh, if you would add underneath the health list if you add David Wharton David Wharton that is Heather Barham's brother David uh, is now in the Cleveland Clinic having some tests run to find out why his heart isn't pumping correctly working correctly uh, they say it's under 30 percent of what it should be doing and he's in a lot of pain so we're asking prayer for him and for his uh, wife Marlene they have a a uh, fairly newborn baby and uh, Marlene also has some health issues and then Rose Hamner is on there the second to the end there and uh, that's Heather's grandmother and she's uh, she just said Rose uh, Grandma Rose is shutting down more and more each day and pray for grace for her and strength and peace for the rest of the family all right so uh, continue to pray for uh, th that request if you would all right 
We're praying for the different ministries, as we mentioned, and especially I hope you're praying for the fair and for many to come to know Christ as their Savior that day. Uh, pray for those in authority, uh, praying for these who battle cancer, these on our salvation list, needing to be saved, and of course the military, those defending us and protecting our country, and then of course uh, our missionaries highlighted by Brother Fielder and Worldview uh, Ministries here this evening, okay? Nikki? Holloway. Okay. Do you know her spiritual condition at all? Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. All right. Added her on. That's good. Brother Wallace, would you come this evening and be prepared to lead us in prayer if you would? And, uh, Appreciate you doing that. And uh, let's pray together as Brother Bob leads us. And uh, as he leads audibly, you just pray along with him silently. And uh, let's say unite our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Father, thank you again for the great opportunity we have to come and listen from your word. Lord, we want to thank you for your word. Lord, every day as we read it and we study it. Lord, uh, you make it so real to us. And Lord, it don't only uh, uh, open up our understanding, but helps us to stay steadfast, unmovable, helps our faith to grow, helps us to stand in times when uh, normal people wouldn't. And Father, we just want to thank you for your word and how it works in our life. Lord, continue that work. You promised that when we became your children, a great work has begun in all of us. And Lord, I just pray that that work would continue until the day when we put our, our glory robe on. Lord, help us to be faithful. Help us to stay always until the end. Father, we do pray for Brother Felder and the rest of the, the uh, missionaries. We we pray that, Lord, here at Bible Baptist Church, we are doing exactly as you would want us to do. We, we uh, want uh, your will as our will. We want to be on the same plan that you want, you're you on. And, Lord, uh, we want you to uh, always keep us straight, always keep us on the right path. And, Lord, uh, let us uh, give us that peace that we're, we're not straying from... Uh, your perfect will and what you would have for our church to do. And Father, I do pray for this one, Stephanie. Lord, whatever physical condition or spiritual condition is there, we know not. But Lord, I am confident that I am praying to a God that hears and answers our prayer. Lord, I read so many times about the God that we serve and how that those prayers are up there. And, and Lord, uh, they may not get answered uh, after we're uh, after we've left this earth but Lord we do know that you answer them in the perfect timing and Lord we just ask that your perfect will would be done in, in her life we pray for Brother Wharton Lord that you would help him Lord help the doctors to find out uh, just what is uh, going on there and Lord uh, may uh, you guide them and direct them and give them, give them uh, wisdom uh, Lord that uh, medical wisdom that would uh, uh, bring forth a, a new thing and Lord that uh, it would uh, first help Brother Wharton to be a, a shining light for you and Lord help him to uh, walk by faith, help these people to see even in the countenance of his face, Lord how he stands and stands for you Lord help his wife, strengthen her uh, Lord and uh, only the strength that you can give, the comfort that you can give Lord, we seem so useless sometimes of man's words. But, uh, Lord, your Bible speaks of that uh, peace that passeth all understanding. And, Lord, we know you can deliver at the right time. Father, I do pray for Heather's grandma that you'll give her peace, give her comfort. Lord, as the body is shutting down, and, uh, Father, I just pray that you'll give the uh, uh, family comfort at this time. 
And Lord, just uh, uh, do a work there that uh, we will hear great testimony. As uh, Pastor was teaching us tonight about us uh, teaching at the woman, about the woman at the well and how when she got saved, she went and, and testified of you. And Lord, I just uh, uh, pray that uh, this woman's testimony, even in death, uh, Lord, will reach out to people and uh, talk to their hearts. And, and Lord, let them know that if they're not saved, they can see her one day and, and Lord, be with her for eternity. Father, I pray that uh, as we open up your word tonight, that Lord, we'll have a, a spirit of hearing, of receiving, of understanding. And Lord, only you can give us that. Uh, many times in your word that, uh, Lord, you seem to block the word from people who didn't want to hear. And Lord, the uh, Bible talks about us casting our pearls before swine. And uh, Father, we know that uh, your word will not come back void, that it will always do the work that you intend for it to do. So Father, as our pastor comes and he opens up your precious word, Help us all to receive it with the right spirit. Father, guide him and direct him. Lord, help him not to say those things which ought not be said. But Lord, help him to emphasize and say those things which uh, you want pointed out to us. And Lord, we give you all the thanks and praise for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, 228 in your hymnal, 228. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. A wonderful Savior to me. Let's all stand one more time as we sing 228, please. On that first. A wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. A wonderful Savior to me. He hides my soul. He giveth me strength as my chain. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with Amen. Greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome. We'll come back and sing that last stanza together.
numberless blessings each moment he crowns and filled with his fullness divine i sing in my rapture of glory to god for such a redeemer as mine he hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry thirsty land he hideth my life in the depths of his love covers me there with his hand and covers me there with his hand this is another one of those songs i'm not sure how you cannot get excited if you read the words to this song. Let's sing that last together. When clothed in his brightness transported, I rise to meet him in clouds of the sky. On that last together. When clothed in his brightness transported, I rise. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Be seated if you will, and the ushers will come and get our offering tonight. We'll take the offering, uh, that, of course, other than the tithe or whatever, but we'll put that towards the fair and the uh, expenses we'll have to get some things uh, for that. And uh, please be praying for that day and for God to use it. And uh, anywhere you see families, kids, children, anybody, just give them a flyer, invite them to come, and let's get them out. And uh, still plenty of posters there as well if you want to get some posters. If you have uh, in your neighborhood anywhere where kids gather to catch a bus or anything like that, that's a good place to put up the poster. And uh, just uh, put it right on the telephone pole there and uh, let them see what's going on. All right? Let's pray and we'll ask God's blessing on our offering tonight. Brother Taylor, I'd like you to pray for me. Hey, let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you again, Lord, just lifting up your name. and Thanksgiving, Lord, you're so good to us. Father, we, uh, we already thank you for the mercy that you're, you're turning the hearts of the people out here in the community, Lord, with these businesses wanting to help for the fair day, Lord. I just pray for continuance in the favor. And Lord, uh, asking for good weather, Lord, that this not be hindered, Lord. Father, as we take up this offering, may it be pleasing in your sight and multiply it as only you can. And Lord, be with the pastor tonight. As he opens up your word again, Lord, help us all to be attentive and, and listen that we might retain what is given to us, Lord, that we can meditate upon it. Yes. Father, be with us now. We thank you for being here. Give you the thanks, praise, honor, and glory for all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
John 15 this evening, John 15. <clears throat> John 15. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. Herein is my Father, I'm sorry, as the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. I, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Father, add your blessing to the reading of our scripture now this evening. And Lord, we do ask your blessing on our study here of this passage tonight. You would help us to glean the truths that you have given to us and that, Holy Spirit, you'd be the teacher, the master teacher here in our assembly this evening. We pray, Lord, that your will will be accomplished in each of our hearts and lives and you'll help us to understand how we can have fruit that remains. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Fruit that remains. You know, when we... When we get saved, we enter into a lifelong relationship with Jesus Christ. The Bible says He is the vine and we are the branches. And by the way, if you're a branch, it means you're attached to the vine. Okay? What do you call a branch that is not attached to the vine? You call it a stick. Okay? And uh, if you're attached to the vine, you're a branch. If you're not, you're just a plain stick. Well, we're, if we're in Christ, and that's what salvation is, if we're in Christ, then we're attached to the vine. And, and we will bring forth fruit, the Bible says. All right? If you're in the vine, you will bring forth fruit. I don't believe that this necessarily is speaking just about the fruit of the Spirit. I think it's talking about the fruit of a Christian. And the fruit of a Christian is another Christian. All right? And, and so it's teaching us really about the Great Commission. Uh, soul winning, as we call it. It's teaching us how to get the gospel to other people. And there is a progression to it. There's something that we have to... It, it, it's where you cannot quit. You cannot give up. You cannot get weary in well-doing. All right? Or you'll never see fruit that remains. Uh, the goal is to get to verse 16. And that is to have fruit that remains. All right? That's the goal. Now, how do we get there? All right? Number one is every Christian is to bear fruit. Every Christian is to bear fruit. Verse number two. 
Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that he may bring forth more fruit. So if you're in him, by the way, this teaches an important truth here. If you're in Christ, you're a branch, and you're not going to bear fruit, he takes it away. You say, what exactly does that mean? It means just what it says. Uh, the Lord will take you away. Let me, let me, I think he illustrated it in Luke 13. Go backwards to the Gospel of Luke, would you? Keep your finger there in John 15. We'll come back to it. But look over at Luke 13. Would you go there, please? Luke 13. And notice verse number 6. Luke's 13 and verse 6. If you're there, you say amen. amen. All right. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit thereon and found what? None. No fruit. And he said to the dresser's vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. So what's he tell the, the vine dresser to do? Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? And he answering said to him, Lord, let alone this year also till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. He's saying, here's the, here's the fig tree. Now think about that. Think about if you were the fig tree. Think about if Christ was coming to look at your life or my life. And he's checking us out, and he didn't see any fruit. He only saw leaves. Would he, you know what God says? Time to cut it down. Why are you cumbering my earth? Why are you walking on my dirt and drinking my water and breathing my air and not bringing forth fruit? And God says, you'll just, he, he can, he can it, may look like, it, it may look like a heart attack. It may look like a car wreck. It may look like some other accident. And we say, boy, that's a horrible thing. Why did that happen? But, and by the way, we don't know. But God, God's word is true. And he won't let you cumber the earth. He's patient. He's long-suffering. And by the way, we, we know. And you say, oh, I know somebody, man. They say they're saved. Boy, they have and They've cumbered in the ground a long time. It's not, this isn't about us looking at somebody else. It's about us looking at us. Am I cumbering the ground? Is the Lord seeing fruit in my life? And if not, it's, it's certain death, and the Lord will take us out and, and take us up. All right? They're... they're uh, any, as soon as somebody comes to Christ, they ought to be endeavoring to bring others to Christ. Okay? One of the, one of the surest things, listen, uh, when Andrew, look at John chapter 1. We're right here in the same area. Just look at John chapter 1. Andrew had been a follower of John the Baptist, and then he became a follower of Jesus, as John announced just who Jesus was, and what Jesus was, uh, that, that he was the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And verse number 40, well, verse 40, notice it says of John chapter 1, One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon, which saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas by interpretation of stone. And, and then, of course, the day following, now, what happens? Uh, he finds Philip and saith unto him, Follow me. Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. But what did Philip do in verse 45? He went and found Nathanael. And he told him about Jesus. See, as soon as you come to know Christ your Savior, you ought to have a desire to tell someone else about Christ. In fact, that's, that's one of the sure indications that you have received Christ. Is that you get concerned about your, your loved ones. In both these cases, these were family members. You ought to be concerned about family members and loved ones that they, that they be saved. One of the sure signs that Jeannie has been born again is she's concerned about her family. And now she got to see her sister come to Christ. And, and, and that's, that's the way it's supposed to be. The woman at the well who will study in Sunday school on Sunday morning, um, what happened? As soon as she got saved, she left her water pot and she went back to the city and she began witnessing, telling other people. Did she know everything there was to know? No. We had a fellow one time, I'll never forget him, Patrick Martinez, and I think I've told the story here before. You know, Patrick came to church on a Sunday, and it was, uh, uh, I think, Thursday night soul winning in those days, and on Thursday night we met to go out soul winning, and guess who showed up? Patrick. I said, what are you doing here? We're supposed to come see you. 
And uh, he was just all excited. He was a 21-year-old kid. He was all pumped up, man. He was excited. He had been saved, and he was excited to tell people about Jesus. And uh, we, we had him go with people for a few weeks. And uh, one time he decided he was, he was ready to go on, you know, on his own and do, some, do the talking. And he came back one Thursday night just excited as could be. He got to see somebody saved. And he said, well, tell us about it. You know, we had testimonies. Tell us about how you, uh, tell us about how you witnessed to him. And he goes, well, I just, you know, I told him there about how Nebuchadnezzar got born again. And uh, he came to Jesus at night, and he told the story all about Nebuchadnezzar getting born again. And uh, for those of you who don't know, it wasn't Nebuchadnezzar. It was Nicodemus who got born again. Now, did he know all the Bible and all that? No, no, but you know what? He knew somebody got born again, and he went to John 3 and told him how they could get born again. And guess what? They got born again, whether he used the right name or the wrong name. It didn't matter. You don't have to know everything. Sometimes people are afraid to witness because, oh, they'll ask me a question I don't know. What should I say? You know what you say? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I'll find out for you. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll check it out, and I'll get back to you with that answer. But I don't have the answer for that. You don't witness because you have all the answers. You witness because you know Jesus, and you want to get someone else to Jesus. All right, so every Christian is to bear fruit. Number two, we go from bearing fruit to bearing more fruit through purging. We go from fruit to bearing more fruit through purging. Back in John 15. Every, notice in verse number 2, Every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Purging is pruning. It's pruning. It's cleansing us from whatever is impure. It's removing from our life whatever is offensive to God. That's, that's purging. It might be alcohol. It might be tobacco. It might be immorality. It might be rock and roll. It might be foul language. It might be immodest dress. By the way, it might be pride. It might be gossip. It could be any number of things that God begins to purge. How does He do that? He does it by the Word of God. Okay? It's the Word of God that cleanses that begins to purge these things out of your life why listen he doesn't do it by someone else telling you what you need to do be careful about that now if a if a new convert asks you what about this or what about that listen the best thing to do is to point them to the word of god let the word of god and the holy spirit of god do the work and you'll be so much further ahead than if you just try to do it I don't want anybody to say, well, why do you do that? Because my pastor said I shouldn't do it. But here's the problem you got. They may have a pastor who says they ought to do it. Then you just got man's word versus man's word. They ought to be able to, listen, when the Bible says give a reason of the hope that lies within us, then that reason of the hope that lies within us ought to come from an authority. And your pastor's not the authority, but the word of God is your authority. And when I, if you come to me, I'll do my best to point you to the Word of God and, and make sure you know. Because, listen, it's the Bible that's going to do the purging. It's the Word of God that's going to cleanse these things from your life. And if God does, listen, if you don't do it for God, it isn't going to last. You can't do it for man. Okay? You can't do it for another person. It won't last. God has to do the work. Whatsoever God does, I know that He'll do it right and He'll do it forever. Okay, and he doesn't change. So the purging happens by the Word of God. So as I, as I read the Word of God, I'm, I'm newly saved. I want to bear fruit, witness for Christ. As I read the Word of God, as I, as I uh, study the Word of God, as I memorize the Word of God, as I meditate in the Word of God, as I hear the Word of God taught, as I come to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and I, I, I'm listening to the Word of God, then, then God begins to purge me. God begins to point out things in my life that are hindering my fruitfulness for Him. And so as I, He purges those things out and I take those things out of my life, I see I, don't, I won't just bear fruit. I will begin to bear more fruit, uh, increase in my fruitfulness. A lot of people wonder, well, how come I can't get more people saved? Maybe there's some things God wants to purge out of your life and you're refusing to let Him prune you. You won't let those things go. <clears throat> so he'll allow you to see more people saved. Now, let's continue to progress. We go from more fruit to much fruit 
by abiding. Abiding. Notice verse 4 and 5. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Now, when it talks about abiding, that means to continue permanently. It means to dwell. It means to adhere to. So, I'm to dwell with Christ. I'm to continue permanently with Christ. I'm to adhere to Christ. And the result will be much fruit. See, this is when we begin to realize our utter dependence on Jesus Christ. That's why he ends the last sentence of verse number 5 with what? Without me, you can do nothing. Then we begin to realize that, hey, this Christian life isn't me trying harder. This Christian life isn't me and my effort trying to do whatever I can do. It, it is, I, I want to do what I can do. I want to have the effort. But listen, that, that energy behind that effort, that power to help me do that, listen, isn't coming from me. It has to come from Christ. It has to come from God. He's got, and I recognize that without Him, I can't do anything. I, I, I'm, but I'm only a branch. All the nutrients and all the supply and all the power I get has to come from the vine. The branch can't do that on its own. Without Him, I can do nothing. Now, how do we abide in Christ? How do we dwell permanently with Christ? How do we adhere to Christ? How do we do that? That's, that's listed in verse number 7. Verse number 7, If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. So now we come back to the Word of God again. His Word abiding in me. I abide in Him as His words abide in me. As I allow His Word to adhere to me and to dwell in me and to live in me. His words continually in me. Isn't that what Psalm 1 talks about? But His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in His law doth He meditate. How often? Day and night. That's what He told Joshua. Day and night, Joshua. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night. He said, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein. See, said, Joshua, your, your success is going to be dependent on how much you're allowing the Word of God to dwell in you not just, not just pick it up in the morning and read it for 10 minutes and then close it and never think about the Bible the rest of the day. That's not abiding, letting His Word abide in you. One of the best things that they have in the RU program are these little cards. They call them meditation cards or meds. Daily meds is what they call it. And what you do is as God speaks to your heart and gives you a verse in the morning, you write it on that card and then you carry it with you throughout the day. And, and at any opportunity you have downtime, listen, you pull that card out and you read it again. And you, you may read that verse 10, 12, 15 times a day. And letting the Word of God continue to stay with you and stick with you and adhere to you. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, He also gives a wonderful prayer promise. What does He say? You'll ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. How can that be? Because now my will will be His will. And if I ask anything according to His will, I'll, I'll get it. And so will you. And he gives it, tucks in a wonderful prayer promise there. But it's abiding, abiding, abiding. Not just visiting Christ. Not just this nice thing we do on Sunday or Wednesday and go to church and do we, we did our little church thing and now we ought to feel good about ourselves. No, no, no. It's not abiding in Christ. It's, it's and adhering to Him. It's, it's permanently dwelling with Him. Most of, you, most of you discovered that dating your spouse was different than when you married them. Once you, you know, you, you always see each other on your best behavior when you were uh, on, the, on the, the dating aspect of it. But you understand, once you start living as husband and wife, and now you get to see the, the warts and all, you know. Uh, and, and it's just a different thing. But you, living's a different story. You really get to know somebody. And listen, don't just visit Jesus Christ. Get to know Him. And by the way, He, he knows you. He knows you. And that's okay. He knows all about you. 
And guess what? He loves you anyway. Sometimes we get fearful. To, oh, we, we're, we're fearful to open up to people who say, man, if they knew certain things about me, they wouldn't love me or they wouldn't like me. But God knows everything about you, and he still loves you. And praise God for that. So we go from fruit to much fruit by abiding in him. And let me just pause and say something about verse number six. Because some people like to point out that they, they, they want to say that this is proof that a person can lose their salvation. Notice it says, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. That it is right there. If you, you don't bear fruit, God casts you off, and you get gathered up, and you get burned in the fire, and that's the fire of hell. Well, first of all, look at what it says. What's the, what's the second and third word of verse 6? A man abide not in me. What's the next word after me? He is cast forth as a branch and is withered. Singular, talking about a single person, correct? Does it say men gather him and cast him into the fire and he is burned? No, it changes. Now it says men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. Now, when you, I want you to think about that in light of 1 Corinthians chapter 3. When the Bible talks about we stand but the judgment seat of Christ. And our works are all going to be put to the test. How are they going to be tested? By fire. In fact, let's look there. Would you go there? Let's take the time to do that, shouldn't we? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, because I want you to be able to, to understand this and adequately state your position and what the Bible teaches on this. It starts in verse 11 where the Bible says, Other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it will be revealed by what? Fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide wherein he hath built thereupon, he shall receive reward. But if any man's work shall be burned, he will suffer loss. Now look at this. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Here's a man who's saved. He's, uh, the Lord has taken him away, as, the, for, as John 15 says. But what gets burned up? What, 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 what are them and they are burned? It's the works that he's done. It's not fruit, it's works. And his works are burned up, yet he himself is saved, yet so as by fire. That's why it switches from the singular to the plural in, in verse number 6, all right? Now, let's go to number 4 on your Bible study page there. God is glorified when we bear much fruit. Verse number 8 of John 15. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. You had read tonight. Are we here for God's glory? Are we here for God's glory? Yes, yes we are. Uh, we, before you were saved, did you do anything for God's glory? No. And you couldn't. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All right? Now that we're saved, we're to, we're to live for God's glory. And one way to do that is bear much fruit. But we didn't, remember, we didn't start there. You didn't start with much fruit. You started with fruit, and then God purged you and, and took that purging process, and you brought forth more fruit, and you learned to abide in His Word and let His Word abide in you, and then you brought forth much fruit. And when you bring forth much fruit, God is glorified. That, that in... in in the Friday night talk uh, that Brother Currington says that glorify God means you put God in a good light or you make God look good. And when His people bring forth much fruit, it makes God look good. And He's glorified. It brings honor to His name and honor to Him. Number five, we go from much fruit to fruit that remains by becoming a friend to Jesus. So we'll go from much fruit to fruit that remains by being a friend to Jesus. Notice what it says in verse 14. 
Ye are my friends if ye do what? Whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. You've not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Now here's, here's what the Lord chose you for. Not to go to heaven or go to hell. Here's what I ordained you for. Not to go to heaven or go to hell. He chose us and He ordained us to do what? Go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That's what He ordained us for. That's what He chose us for. And, and, and He's telling us, Ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. Hey, you ever had somebody tell you, Hey, will you do me a favor? How do you respond to that? Maybe. Depends on what it is. Well, what do you got in mind? Huh? Are there some people who when they say, hey, will you do me a favor? You just automatically respond, sure, what do you want? If you're a good husband and your wife asks that, that's your answer. If you're a wise husband. But there are certain people, as soon as you say it, that's what you say. Yes, what is it? Whatever you want. Let me ask you a question. Do you say that to the Lord? When you know what He wants you to do? Say, God says, hey, I want you to do something. You say, uh, what is it? Or do you say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm willing to do it. The answer to Jesus Christ is always yes. Yes. You know, thinking about that Syrophoenician woman who came to get her daughter healed, of Jesus. And you know, even Jesus himself told her, I've not come but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. She wasn't a Jew. The disciples tried to get her, you know, quit bugging him. Get away from here. And finally she broke through and even asked Jesus about healing. And Jesus said, I can't take the bread that I've come for the children and cast it to the dogs. You called me a dog? Yeah, that was a derogatory term. It was what the Jews called anybody who wasn't a Jew. They call the Gentiles dogs. Even today, if you, you know, if you don't particularly like somebody, you say, "Man, he's a dirty dog," or he's a, you, 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 you know what I mean? You, yeah, you, you just call people those things. It, and, and you know what? She still never told the Lord no. Even when he said, "I can't take bread and cast it to you dogs," you know what she said? Yes, Lord. But even dogs get some crumbs that fall from the table. And he marveled at her faith. And he granted her request. Even though he wasn't supposed to, so to speak. <laughs> he has come just to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But he admired her faith. And it always pleases God when he sees our faith. But when you always answer yes. Listen, when you get to the point in your Christian life when no matter what it is God says, you just say yes then God says you, you pass from being a servant to being a friend. The servant doesn't always know what his Lord's doing, but he said the friend will know. The friend will know what the Lord's doing. And with that friendship comes fruit that remains. Remains simply means to be left over after others are gone. Now, to get that fruit, let me uh, go back to the Gospel of Luke, will you? We'll come back to John 15 probably, but look at Luke 15. Go back one Gospel to Luke 15. Luke 15 is one of the places where we have the parable of the sower. I'm sorry, it's Luke 8, verse 15 is what I'm looking for. Luke 8, verse 15. The parable of the sower. And Jesus, you, you know the different soils that the word of God fell on the, some by the wayside and some upon the rocks and some upon the thorns and then others fell upon good ground. Look at verse 15. They on that, but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart having heard the word keep it and bring forth fruit with what? Patience. It takes patience to see fruit that remains. It takes patience to see the fruit. You have to stay at it. You have to stay faithful. Okay? I'm told when you plant a fruit tree, you have nothing for at least two years. 
date palms I was reading can take five to eight years after planting before they'll bear fruit. And for to produce viable yields for a commercial harvest, it'll take seven to ten years. You've got to have patience. You've got to have patience. But fruit that remains is a byproduct of desiring to be a friend of Jesus Christ. I'll do whatever you want me to do, God. Whatever, whenever, wherever, I'll do whatever you want. I'll do whatever you ask. So, every Christian bears fruit. We go from fruit to more fruit by purging. So, you, if you, have, you, you can see some fruit and allow things in your life that shouldn't be there. But you'll never get to more fruit until you allow God to purge those things away. Understand, I, was, I remember we had some rose bushes, and my brother-in-law, is, he sells what they call Witherspoon roses, a pretty big deal down the south. And, uh, I mean, the, 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 the real uppity-ups, they have plant their rose gardens, you know what I mean, and spend thousands of dollars, and that's the roses he sells. But, you know, he was telling my wife about these roses, we, those bushes we have, and they're the... They'd be probably Heinz 57, you know. They're just there. They were there like the, the mongrel pup, you know. But uh, telling us where to cut these branches in order for it to grow and uh, to, to get more roses even than, than what was there. But we had to prune them back. You can't just let them go. And so if God, God in his goodness, if you feel like God's pruning them, by the way, that, that can be painful. That's why the Bible says the word of God is sharp as a two-edged sword. It cuts. And it's going to cut away things that don't need to be in your life. And that, that doesn't mean that's always not painful. It's painful. And, and the flesh will cry out. It doesn't like it. But, but it's what's necessary for you to bring forth more fruit. And so God wants you to be more, bring forth more fruit because you, you're going to go from more fruit to much fruit by abiding in Him. Abiding in Him and letting His words abide in you. And that glorifies God. See, it glorifies God when the Christian doesn't just relegate his Bible to Sunday and Wednesday. When the Christian doesn't just relegate his, his time with God to listening to preaching or listening to the radio, but that you have a consistent walk with God every day. And, and you're letting His Word abide in you and you're communicating with Him and He's communicating with you throughout the day. And you live with Him. You dwell with Him. You adhere to Him. That glorifies God. And he'll give you much fruit. And then you go from much, from much fruit to fruit that remains by being a friend to Jesus. By doing whatsoever he commands you. That nothing's off limits. When you know that what God wants you to do. Well, God, I'll do anything, but I'm not going to be a missionary. I'll do anything, God, but I'm not moving. I'll do anything, God, but I'm not going to do, and you fill in whatever the blank is that you tell God you're not willing to do. And, and, and you can be that way, but you'll never be the friend of Jesus if you are. His friends are the ones who says, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Now you have to ask yourself this evening, am I evidence of fruit that remains? Did you ever think about that? You somebody told you about Jesus. You are fruit that remains to somebody who told you about the Lord. That was Frank Wilson. Remember Frank who came and sat over here on a Wednesday night from back in 1977 at Camp Choff? I'm just a you know, a college kid counseling at camp and, and had the honor to lead him to the Lord, just one of the campers that summer. But his words to me when he made a phone call to me Oh, my, in 1987, he called me, and I was, and, and his words to me on the phone were, hey, I just wanted to call and tell you, your fruit remains. Amen. And you know what? I didn't even know it Amen. until he called and said that. Yeah. But it sure was a blessing. Yeah. Maybe there's somebody who you ought to call who was influential in leading you to Christ, yeah. and maybe just a phone call from you to say, hey, you know what? Your fruit remains. That's a great joy. Because, by the way, see, it takes patience. For, for some of you, it may have been a few years, and whoever led you to Christ may have heard some things about how you were living and thought, well, I'm not sure they got that or not. 
but they'd be thrilled to death to know you're serving God now. Amen. Fruit that remains. I'm sure it had to be a great joy, uh, Jeanette. For years, Mrs. Rock was the one who led you to Christ, wasn't it? Pastor Rock? Don't you think it was a great joy to their heart through the years to see you serving God? Amen. That there's fruit that remains, you know? I'm sure they enjoyed that over and over again. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a delightful thing and, and let someone know that but then you have to ask yourself this then do I have fruit that remains am I striving to have that fruit am I striving listen but I'm not striving just to bear fruit I'm striving to be a friend of Jesus I'm allowing him to prune me I'm allowing him to purge me I'm allowing, I want to abide in him and his words abide in me I want to continue to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus you know, back over in Second Peter, Brother Bob read that, I think, at the prison the other night. That passage where it talks about add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge, all that. He says, if you, if you do these things, it'll make you that you won't be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, are you allowing God to do those things in your life and to have the right relationship with Him? When you have that, you'll bring forth fruit. You'll bring forth fruit, and it'll be fruit that remains. I, don't, I want fruit that remains. I want to be fruit that remains. It goes both ways. But let's, let's allow God to have his process. And don't get weary in well-doing. In due season you will reap if you faint not. And God, his desire, what he's chosen, what he's ordained is that we would go, and bring forth fruit, and that our fruit should remain. Now, there's, there's a whole other, well, maybe we'll build on this a little bit, maybe in the weeks to, to follow, but you know, uh, Paul wrote an interesting verse uh, over in the book of Galatians. It just came to me right now. I think it's Galatians 4.19. It is. Galatians 4.19, Paul wrote this, My little children of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. Wow. He said, Paul said, I'm laboring just like giving birth till I can see Christ formed in your life. So this, see the idea, the idea of seeing someone ask Christ to be their Savior and then forgetting about Him, that's not what the Bible teaches. We're to help them. The goal is to, to make disciples out of them. What's a disciple? A follower of Jesus Christ. And so I, I want to continue to help them to become a follower of Jesus. And uh, what, what, what will that mean? Fruit that remains. But you see, you have to ask yourself this question. If the fruit of a Christian is another Christian, what kind of fruit would I have? If I'm training the person that I see saved to be a Christian just like me, what kind of Christian would they be? That's why I want to be a fruit that remains. And I want to have fruit that remains. All right, let's stand together for prayer, shall we? Father, take the truth now this evening. Thank you, Lord, for John 15. Thank you, Lord, for the teaching that we've had here this evening. Spirit of God, you've spoken to our hearts. Create in us, and Lord, help us to, to see the overall plan and purpose that you want to bring us from fruit to more fruit, to much fruit, to fruit that remains. And we know the process will be by purging and by abiding and by becoming your friend, by doing whatsoever you command us to do. Give us that kind of a heart, that kind of a passion to be your friend, that we might in turn have fruit that remains, that you would be glorified and we would fulfill your purpose and that which you've ordained that we do. And so, Lord, bless our going as we go and give the gospel and help us to bear fruit and help us be willing to be pruned so we can bring forth more fruit and then help us to abide in you and let your word abide in us so we could bring forth much fruit and you're glorified when that happens. Lord, stir our heart to be your friend, to have patience, to have patience with people so we can see Christ formed in them and have fruit that remains. And then, Lord, help us to contact people maybe who led us to Christ. We're influential in us becoming a Christian. Just to say, hey, 
your fruit remains. Thank you for showing me how to be saved. Now, Father, dismiss us with your care and help us to be about your business. Bless the flyers that are going out, the gospel that is given. Continue to touch hearts of those who can help with that special day. I pray that people will come and their hearts will be opened by the love of God shown by the people of this church. We'll see many, many souls trust Christ as their Savior on May the 16th. That's our prayer. It's our desire. And from that, we pray that we'll have some fruit that remains. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together. Let's see. What are we going to do? Isn't he wonderful? Wonderful, wonderful. Isn't Jesus my Lord? Wonderful. Here we go. Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus my Lord? Wonderful. Eyes have seen, ears have heard. It's recorded in God's word. Isn't Jesus my Lord? Wonderful. God bless you. You are dismissed. Choir, get ready to come right on up.